Alright, hey guys, Basil from Techno Talk here, and we're going to go ahead and continue with uh, what we were doing last time. So, uh, next step, after making all of our instances, uh, these are classes, by the way, um, just to clarify, so, like, everything with J in front of it is a class in uh, JavaX.Swing that we're going to, these are all objects that we're going to be creating, we're going to be initializing them, or instantiating them, I should say, in the constructor, which we're going to go ahead and start now, so obviously just make a constructor. And um, it's going to have empty parameters. And uh, the first thing we do before we get into instantiating any objects or anything is we're going to have to deal with some uh, maintenance. Uh, I like to call them maintenance, kind of like house cleaning methods uh, to set up certain aspects of the window. So the first thing we need is a super, which is basically going to create a title for the window. So let's call this This is an awesome window. And that's going to come up as the title of the window. The next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need a light. Uh, actually, we're probably going to need a... Uh, this is a very important method, actually. It's a called a default close operation. So go ahead and default close op operation. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to actually exit the window when we hit X. Otherwise, it's not going... Well, it's, I mean exit the program. Otherwise, the program isn't going to exit, and this is going to need to need the parameter exit on close jframe.exit on close. Uh, so you're not going to want this in every window, probably just your main window. We're only dealing with one, so we're going to need it. Um, you're also going to need to do things like set size. Uh, what's a good size to set this for now? I guess maybe like a 450 by 250. And then we're going to need to set a location. This location is necessary. But if you don't want it to stop in the top left corner, which is the default, then go ahead and give it a location, I'd say around 500, 250, or maybe even 300. Um, and then we're going to want to set a layout for the window. This is important. We're going to give it a new flow layout. This is in uh, EWT, which is basically just going to say that, you know, it's the way that things are structured in the window. There's also border layouts and other layouts that we'll get into, but a flow layout is like the standard one where it just adds things over it, over itself. And then the last thing we're going to need to do is set visible to true. And this is kind of stupid, but it's one thing you're going to get used to when you're dealing with GUIs, is that just because you make it doesn't mean that it's actually going to appear or be noticeable. You have to actually set it to be visible. Okay, so now that we've gotten rid of all these house cleaning stuff, and by the way, these are methods that you can also do in the main class if you want. You can do like w dot, and then any of these methods that you want. But uh, I like doing them in the uh, constructor. Sometimes I like doing them in the main class. It depends on what I'm making. But here we're going to start instantiating some objects. So like we have the variable label. And we're going to make that a new j label, and uh, we'll say this is a label. And then um, we're going to create our text area. And we're going to make a new J text area. And uh, with text areas, what you want to do is you actually want to uh, give it a dimension. So uh, it has to do with how many columns of characters that you can put both horizontally and uh, vertically. So let's go ahead and make a square that's like 10 by 10. And you'll see what this means in a second. And then the way that you actually add text to a JText area is um, you're going to say text area dot append. And then you're going to put uh, text in here. So actually, something I'm going to do is I'm going to say this is an uneditable text area. And then I'm going to add a new line. This is so I can show you that you can actually do new lines in text areas unlike JLabels. And you can say like, this is on the second line. Alright, next up is a text field. New J text field. And uh, this only takes one parameter and it's going to be how many, uh, how wide it's going to be. It can't be more than one line, so it's only going to be width. It's kind of like a text area, that, but only one dimensional. So let's go ahead and give it like three. Um, and now let's 
create our password field. So of course I'm just creating a bunch of things so that you can see how they work. It's not going to look very well, very uh, good, sorry, when we put it together, but uh, you can obviously work on how to do that. A password field is going to be the same thing like a uh, text field, so let's make this like 10. So now I have a password field, and this is something that I don't really remember since I don't use password fields much, but I think there's something else we have to do with it. Well, we'll find out once we try it. Let's create a new J button, and let's go ahead and, uh, this takes a parameter of what the button's actually going to say. Say this is on the button. Okay, now that we have all of our objects actually created, we have to add them to the window. Just because we create them doesn't mean they're added. And this is where we can decide the order that we want to add them in. Let's go ahead and add them in the same order. So we're going to add the label, then we're going to add the text area, then we're going to add the text field, then we're going to add the password field. So depending on what the window you're making, you may want to add these in different orders and whatnot. We're going to add a button. And then uh, the last thing we're going to do in our constructor is there's a few things that we might want to add an action listener to. So for example, definitely one of the ones would be uh, the button. And I'll show you what this means in a second. I'm going to add an action listener. And uh, actually first I need to create a handler. Alright, hold on a second. You're not going to understand what this means. But, um, dang it, I need to go over event handling. So basically, in programming, there's stuff called event handling, which has to do with, um, I already talked about action listeners in terms of, um, Whenever I hit a like enter in a text field, or I click a button, or I type a key, um, that's called an event, and you have to be able to handle events using event handlers. And um, there's different types. There's action listeners, there's key listeners, there's mouse listeners. Listeners. Uh, excuse me. Um, I'm gonna just teach you about action listeners today, which are like the most basic event handling event handlers. Um, but in order for it to actually work, first you have to actually add an action listener, which is basically something that's going to say, okay, for this component, wait for an event to happen. It's basically going to tell Java something is going to happen with this component, so just add an act, just listen for something that's going to happen. And then the next thing you're going to want to do is uh, maybe we can do it with a text field. Okay, and then this is all we're going to do for now. We're going to be creating this handler class in the next uh, tutorial. So thanks for watching. See ya.